So welcome back to some more Duel Links Ranked PvP, going in with Mimi, her brand new Aqua deck, and we're playing a bit of a different build for most people, right? Some people are going hardcore on the Aqua, some people going in on the Dragius, but we, if we see it, are going in on the Dark Magician Girl. Because this, uh, you know, once you discard DM, becomes a functionally better summon skull. And so, I think playing her, at least for me so far, has outweighed playing the Torna package. And so, we're going to see if we made the right call. So it does seem like they're on Dragon Caster, maybe. So we can actually do a very big field here. So we can go summon the Canna, let's summon another one, go for the water, and just go all in. You know, I don't really like doing this on turn one, but we kind of have to, right? We've got to clear this Summer Skull in for the Dunkey to the Boogie Master, very cool animation, very, very nice. And uh, let's go for the DMG. And this skill, is so so good right that this buff skill that does work until up to 10 levels not equal 10 like skill says can i'm being dumb again it buffs your 14s 21 so they crash with sevens road and your 12s it's 19 so they get over things like torna it can be very very powerful i do wish that we did get some 1500 bodies right it is kind of unfair that we've got dragons and spellcasters and beasts all 1500s and this deck doesn't have it i believe the dynamis is either a water or a dark and so they could have given us that, and the deck would have been better. We wouldn't need to be playing the uh, Water Magician, who is kind of the weakling of the deck. But also, so is the Canna, and so also the, the 1200 bodies, right? They're all kind of, in their own ways, a bit of a weak link in the deck. But he's going for Recovery Force, so he's been on, like, pure spellcasters, really. Going for a set, he could be Splat for 17, but also could be a Tauner again. And we've got another DMG and a Dainkito. I'm going to... Do I, I don't really want to run out of this, but at the same time... Our hand's getting kind of full, so I feel like here, we go in for cannon, we then play our skill to go and dump one of the Dainkitos to gain a thousand. We'll then play our skill, why not, buff us up, it doesn't really matter, then go for a triple attack. So attacking with this one, they've got a Phantom Bind face down, we've got to watch out for that. It does mean we need to kind of keep count of our Aquas, which we've got four at the moment, so that's fine for most things, right? Seven's Road still loses to this, Dragus still loses with the buff. But the DMG might be important once we get to that point. Going for a dealer, discarding one, he's not seeing Seven's Road yet. But I imagine you've got to see now. No, no? Again? What are you drawing? I am I am baffled by his draws. We've got the best card in the deck, the Seals Carrier. This card is is bonkers, but we can just go and go for a clear now, right? And I can't remember what I don't remember what set first. I assume it wasn't this. But we'll see. Phantom Bind could, could... No, okay, that's fine. Clearing you. And finally for this one, we've got another Seventh Road Witch. I wonder if you should have kept that in hand, right? Because if you do want to see Seventh Road Magician, then summoning her plus Magician is way better than just him by itself. But you've got Recovery Force. One, two, and going for two dealers. Okay. For more of that deep draw, but like, I guess that means you have seen Seventh Road. God, this theme as well is such a jammer. Mimi's themes are so, so good in general. The Rush Duel themes are really great. Going for Doriado in Attack on Meaning, you have probably got the Seventh Road Witch. There we go, in for Seventh Road Witch. Go on, do discard, summon to the boy, Seventh Road Magician, now. We're in a bit of a bad spot, because of course we discarded our Dainkito, so we do need to attack in, and we will lose to Phantom Bind. That is really the big issue here, is we lose to that. So, I'm kind of hoping for a DM here. That'd be huge. We've got Rice Terrace. You know, that works out. So let's go for Seals Carrier first of all. Play the effect, go and get back a cannon, just the best card to grab here. We can then go for the Rice Terrace Secure. We can go and discard the DMG to put you to defense. And also, the Witch, because we got two. It feels good having this card be useful now. Then we can sack off four. Our lovely Dunkito. 1 2, summon you. We'll play our effect to dump the Kribot to gain some life. We'll summon the cannon. We'll then play the skill. Why not? We'll go and buff up the cannon as well. And from here, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So all this clears. Thankfully, there's one. Here comes the second. We could have gone for DMG as well, actually, there. Would have been fine. But I do kind of want a game to waste some of his cards. No? Okay. And then to get to the face. Kind of regretting now, because I, I really feel like 
those 500 points of damage are going to matter. And if, if we did have a third Keto, which we don't, then with the skill, we would have been on lethal. But we're not now. So that's kind of worrying. But going for the dealer. Hopefully, he can't outboat all of our board, right? Discarding Seven's Road, though, might mean that Dragius is coming down. Here he comes, multi-strike Dragon Dragius, the bane of Dawn's existence. This card is bonkers. Now, looking at his hand and his draws, we might have to win based off of deck out. Looking at it, because I don't think we can we can really like hope to win here, right? So we can go like carry our brain car back, but then we're wide open. Um, so I feel like we've got to go for the life point gain. We'll send this away. We'll then go and put you to... You know, I think keeping her in attack is fine, right? We'll set these two. They've got a crash of Dragius, so at least clear his body. He's going to draw four. Then next turn, he's going to draw two. And deck out. Because he's got a summon. He can't not summon next turn. Unless there is a second copy or a third copy of the cats, which he might have. Thinking about it. But we know one is Phantom Bind. So we're in a very good spot. On life point, on card advantage, Thunder the Thunder is going to be huge. All we can do now is this. He's got to win this turn. If he summons us out, okay, or not, he can just recovery force. Of course, the, 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 of course, he would have the third copy in his hand. Oh, that's so annoying. He gets one more turn. But I think we're fine. As long as there's no pierce, which uh, there could, could be, there could be, then going for Yamri Ruler, which isn't going to worry us, right? This doesn't matter. You're still drawing four. Yeah, you've lost. You've lost. You idiot. You've lost. Uh, thank you. You've lost. We've got the party party, the thunder. We can go and do it, right? Just just for the fun of it. Summon you. Play the effect. Go and bring back the cannon. Why not? We can then go and play our cannon. We can go and play another cannon. We can go and buff these cards up and just like, it doesn't matter. But it's funny, right? Let's go for one. Let's go for buffing up the other one. Let's go and play the triple threat thunder. To go and make you zero. We can deal some damage. We can't gain life point because we don't want to put into defense mode. We can still attack in for 21. It's going to be less of a Phantom Bind. It doesn't matter. We've still won. There we go, Phantom Bind. Deal damage. It's okay. End our turn. He draws. Gavin, goodbye. Thank you for the duel. On to game number two. On to game number two versus Mimi. So it could be. It could be the Aquas. It could be Dragius. It could be anything. Again, Russian characters. On a full win streak, it is looking very good. Let's see. That's not the best hand, right? But we have got this for next turn. And so I do... I'm going to just do this, right? I, I don't like this because every time this happens and you end on just like one card, there is probably, probably a Dragius coming your way. And I don't like it. But we have got the full combo for the key to next turn. And if we get a DM... That's a discard. And summon this. More attack points. If not, we've got more bodies. So, we might be okay. Two back row. Three back row. Okay, no. Just two. Okay. Same two. I'm going to assume it's also going to be Aquas, right? If you're playing like that, then sure. Let's go for the carrier. We can do this, right? We can... Oh, we, we have got this. This is so in the bag, right? We'll summon Grace. We'll go and play Tienkito. Why not? In attack mode. One and two. We can then summon into our cannon as well. We're not going to the summon the DMG. I think we'll keep her in hand. We'll flip you up. We'll play the skill for this. We'll dump the cannon. Kind of worried about that, but I think in the long run, it'll be better. Uh, let's go for this. Ooh, actually. Because if they're playing spell cast and we hit the wrong one, then we've kind of got to. Just like guarantee the damage goes through. Attack in. Got a phantom bind. Face down. Okay. It is Aquas. Okay, very cool. They're playing the server as well. I'm not. I I didn't like this. I found we weren't seeing Waste Tribute off quick enough. And so I kind of cut it. But going for the cannon. Going for the moon. You've got the combo. Grace Princess. Coming out. Dunkito. You must have it. No. Gravity Press Dragon. This is a very cool tech in this deck. A very cool tech. Just making our guy weaker. Now this cannon can beat over 25. That is so huge, but they can't beat over DMG. And that's a really big thing. It's next turn. We're guaranteeing beating over everything. Oh, they can. Okay, I know I'm blind. I'm just, 
I'm blind. Yeah, 1921. Yeah, I'm blind. Okay. Nothing on board, but we are fine. Just hopefully we don't see a brick hand and we don't we don't see a great hand either, but it is it is kind of fine. So let's set you. Let's go for DMG. The problem here is we've got not that many bodies like in a graveyard, right? We've got too many, right? That's what I should say. Let's set Kana. Let's set you. We'll go and crash into the gravity crash and that'll be fine. Phantom Bind is still kind of annoying, but this one, despite our life point difference, does kind of look like a win for them. Just off of the raw advantage they have at the moment, right? With five cards in hand, they've got double tributes, Thunder coming down, going for the big OTK play. Now, if they're on Dragius, which they can be, because they're, 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 they're Tauner as well, like, this deck with Dragius is so funny. I got OTK with it, just once an OTK. Summon Skull as well, a very big board. Hopefully flip with this one, please. Don't flip with this one, don't. No, not the canner. No, the one kind of problem is that this 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 doesn't, this really, this really sucks when you get cannon flipped. Really sucks. But, full board clear. Come on, we're good. Well, we're not good because that, that back row is very scary, but we've got nothing again that really helps. Uh, that is really kind of annoying. So let's go carrier. Let's carrier. Bring back the cannon for next turn. We, uh, it's, it's, it's so it's so rough, isn't it? So let's go for DMG because at least this can clear this. Uh, let's set Pierce. Let's go and we've got to we've got to set right. We can't we can't risk this. So we set these two. We go combat. And we clear this and we hope that there's no other Tauner because if there is, we lose. Just straight up, given the card draw. It's gonna happen, but I like this deck is so back and forward, you know, and with Rush at the moment, I'm really feeling it. I'm really feeling the back and forward gameplay, and it's much better in my opinion. There we go, Dainkito, down Speed Duel. Here we go, Dainkito can be getting very big, 32, discarding the max rated for the 1000 boost, okay. Very cool, she's now more back in the game, it's now less even, and there is the Hammer Crush, which isn't going to be that impactful for us. It is scary for her because she thinks I'm on the Phantom Bind and I cut it. And I kind of regret it, but I cut it. And so, oh, they, they can clear again. They can clear again. But we'll see. In for one. In for two. In for three. All we need is a is a banger hand. Is a bang hand of a Seals Carrier and a Tribute. And we're good. We have got... That's not it. And we've not got creep on the graveyard, so that also doesn't really work out. We just lose it, right? That's that's really, really annoying. This is dead. This gains us 500 or 400, 2000, right? And then they crash with Dunkito, they crash with Summon Skull, and then they win. We we tried our best, you know, we just didn't see the Dunkitos at all. Discarding for a thousand, they're back in the game. Just swing. All you gotta do is swing for the Tauna. They're gonna make sure. They've got the damage in. Okay, fair enough. That is that is the correct play. Go on. Battle phase, attack in, in with the summer skull. Finish me off with a tornado. Go for exactly four. You don't. On to game number three. Okay, game three versus another Mimi. You're seeing this a lot. Even if it's just people playing allowed to rank her up, which is kind of happening given everyone is already in cog already. We are going first, which we don't like to see, but this isn't a bad hand. But at least we can kind of guarantee that next turn we've got the carrier into the cannon and so it's not all bad but again it is dependent on seeing that draw into a big body and i kind of think that we're running too little we're running seven well really four but rush is really weird you know some games you can have where you just open all high levels and you're like shit i should cut back and then you cut back and then you don't see them and so it's a it's a real it's a real rough format to kind of be playing but it's a real fun format going in Okay, so they're playing the Dragius build, 100%. Okay, can we clear? We cannot clear right now. But we can get back all of our resources. So we can go for the... Does it, does it matter? Like, this function is the same, right, as doing... No, that's better. We go carrier. Carrier in for the cannon for next turn. We can then go for our what, Magician go for our Lamoon, and we're just going to set ourselves up with a lovely, lovely wall. 
for now. We can't beat over the Prima Katana. We can beat over these two. But if they've got a Dragus coming down, you're going to clear. You're not drawing much next turn. So if we did that, we would have given them more card advantage. But let's see. In for the DMG. That's not great. But we kind of have to go with that, right? It's the best we've got at the moment. But I kind of feel like we have to. We have to put some damage in. And so we've got to go for this. It's not the best board. But it is going to get us like through the turn. So let's go in. Attack him with you. You've not got Phantom Bind. That's great. Did more damage. With more than double life points. They can gain 9 on everything. It only really becomes a problem if they've got Dragius. Now... You're gaining 5, that's fine. You're sacking off probably- no you're not. Oh. That's actually not that bad. CS takes some damage, you've got to cr crash with this, that's fine. If there was a Dragius, it would have been horrible. But there wasn't. And we've got lovely Dankito, there we go. So, can we game here? I kind of think we can, so- well maybe not. Grace Princess, no we, we definitely can't, right? In 4, Water Magician. We'll then go for the Dainkito. We're not going to gain any life points, which is kind of annoying. But we should be okay in other areas, right? So, we'll summon the Cannon. We'll summon the Moon. We'll then go for our skill. We'll guarantee our guy goes through, right? So, buff on... No, actually no, more damage, right? More damage, we know it's not bad to bind. They're going to scoop onto game number four. So, this one is for my 100th win in the rank season. Getting my UR ticket for Rushdoor. Getting my Lamoon. Versus a Roman. Okay, going second. We'd like to see it. Please be playing the base Psychic deck. Don't be playing the Dragius, Aggro, Garbage, whatever. You know, I keep saying it in Rushdoor, right? But that's kind of my one gripe so far. Is that in Speed Duel, if you face a character, you kind of know what to expect, right? If it's a Revolver, it's Rockets. If it's like a, a Mako, then they could be on anything, right? But in Rush... It's more likely going to be Dragon Caster. However, it does seem we have got a very basest player, <laughs> a very basest player of Psychics. Very cool. So we've got a very good turn board. You know, uh, the issue again with Psychics is they've got that trap card, right? That does give them a 500 attack boost. So we've got to clear Daikito here and then kind of hope that that trap doesn't exist. But if it does, then we've got to not attack. So it is, it is a bit worrying. It is a bit worrying, but, but we'll be fine, you know, we'll swing in, nothing here, there is, they've got the trap, that's, ve that's very annoying, that's very annoying, so, do we, do we swing in, because, in the future turns, that's going to be a bit of an issue, I think we do, I think we do, and hope, is the right move, severing wall, buff up, that's fine, recurring you, seeing that turn one, is incredible. It's incredible because of that combo. But you've got the Climax Arena, you've got the Book of Moon, you've got the Prima Katana. So multiple ways of getting through this. Which is fine going for the Climax Beat to get the finale. So I imagine you've got the Prima Katana. I would imagine. Do you, you don't go for Burn here? No, you've got Lullabind, okay. <laughs> going for the Book of Moon, that is that's a very weak board. A very weak board, which means it's going to be an easy clear. Because if you had the Prima Katana, you'd probably use that. At the moment, they can only make their guy a thousand. So they might have realized they've screwed up. Yeah, they have. They can't even out it. They can't even out it. Oh, that's rough. That's really, really rough. But it does mean an easy game for us, and that's always good. So we can go, of course, into you. We'll summon our, our cannon. We'll summon the moon. We'll go for a lovely buff up. And we're now kind of safe from the, the trap cards as well. So our back row. Attack in. Deal some damage. It's not going to work. You know, whatever you've got is not going to be enough. Your psychic wall. It's not enough to survive this turn. Don't play it now. You don't need to. Attack in for 21 here. Play it now. Okay. That's... You don't need to, and I feel like you should wait, but I guess wanting to recycle the very bases is kind of more important for next turn. Okay, and we know both those back row are Climax Finale. We know now. 
Which is more baffling because then you could have actually been over this if they are both Climax Finale. A little weird, but going for the What Angel, which means you can get back the Lullabind to book this again. Going for Music Performer, gonna be taking life to deal 300, which I guess does that put her in range for a skill? Like where where is the skill again? It is, it's just been played. I assume this gives back life point, right? If it's a thousand or lower, it does, okay. That was a good play. Well done. Lullabind, gonna be booking my Dying Keto. And in for Fold of Blitz the Infinite Dream. I I like this boss, it's very cool. Burn 15, and then just attack in for some, some big damage. So you can clear by yourself. We can't clear that without all Pierce. That is going to strike me down. Deal 13. Getting a bit weak, but we should be fine, right? Ooh. Or maybe not. Maybe not, because we can't we can't clear that. Which is really annoying. So I'm going to summon one oh, magician. Going to play party party party. Gain life. And then we're going to set you over this. And the reason for that is I want them to be kind of scared. And also, I want to draw a dying keto. Because right now, it's dying keto or bust in terms of a, a win here. Like, I guess seeing DM would work, and we've only seen one Daikido so far, but our hand is not looking great for getting there, right? Although, we could have summoned Rice Terra Secure, put to defense mode with the DMG, attacked in, and game was on board. How, how do you misplay? How do you do it? H how? Do I not see it until it's too late? How? I think we hope for Pierce next turn. I I I think if we can if we can draw into a high level card next turn, if it's a DM or a Dankito, we're seeing four cards out of nine. There's no way they're on the bottom. Then we've won next turn. I guess. Unless we don't see three bodies, which might happen. Ah. Uh, 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 not looking good. We've got Yes! Okay, okay, we're fine, we're fine. Let's go Carrier, let's play you. This was so scuffed. I am so sorry to anyone watching that like actively, you know, enjoys my content. I am so sorry that this is how you are seeing me play. True of Thunder, gonna weaken you. Let's go Dying Keto, the Boogie Master, one and two. Something to you. We'll then play our cannon. We'll then go and buff you up. It's not the life one game trap, that's fine. We can then go and I guess, doesn't matter. Keto works, uh, battle phase, attack in. No, it's Psychic Wall, okay. Okay, that, that's fine. We still win, that's okay. It just took us a bit of a, a, a bit of a while to get there. You know, we should have won back when we did, but we now won now. Purely because they didn't see a copy of their Prima Katana. Let's go for one more duel. I think I'm gonna cut that one down a bit. Let's go for one more. Okay, the final duel, a mirror match, me versus me and me. They are playing 30, 34, 33. They're playing a size. Setting one, setting two, setting three. We've got DM. Very, very good. So, there's Dankito. Let's set Water Magician. We'll set Rice Terrace. We'll summon into DM. And we've not actually got a Seals Carry Alive next turn. It's kind of worrying, but it does mean they've got to play a Dragius. They're going for a Man Pick. They're playing, they're playing Dragon Caster. Of course, to end it off, we'd see a Dragon Caster. And even if you've seen Dragon Caster, this theme is such a jam. How how can you be mad? Do do, do do. They're passing their turn. I don't know what they're doing, but they're gonna get slapped. We have got Canna, real tough one. I kind of want to just go for the cannon as well. Uh, I don't want to play Seals Carrier yet. We'll go for the tribute. One and two. Dying Keto for the final time of today's video. The Boogie Master coming to the field. Boom! There we go. So here we can go for the lovely Pierce and just deal a big, big chunk of damage. I think the first time this card's seen play today, but it does come in clutch. We'll buff you up to 32. We'll hope there's a zero face down and there's a phantom bind in the back row. Okay, that is good to know. Gonna be weakening by four if they do. 14, not the best. Oh, 14 again, okay. So are they, oh no, they're playing the beetle. They're on Diabolic King Beetle. Okay, that is, at least more based. You know, that's at least more based than playing 
pure dragon casters. Going for three set again, and this time we've got a DMG. Okay, so Sekri bot summoned the DMG, and we've now got a very very nice board. So here we can go and pitch the Water Magician, right? To go and gain some life, and just uh, work on clearing, right? Attacking with one, two hundred. Attacking with two. Nothing again. Twenty-five. Here we go. Unless, unless they like accidentally logged onto PvP with their Mimi farm deck, which might have happened. Thinking about it, they've got two back row. They could both be hammer crushes, and they could just be playing their farm deck, which would be very funny. But the problem is, is that right now we don't have access to a lot of cards that deal like piercing damage. Right, we haven't got the torn in our deck, so. We're kind of at the mercy of just attacking in and seeing if we can outgrind our opponent and kind of force them to summon into one of their beetles or one of their new ninjas or something and then hope we can clear. This might be a very boring final match of just outgrinding our opponent down to our cards being more than them and if they can keep drawing four for turn and we draw one then we're going to be in a good spot. Darkness approaches, okay. I imagine you're going to book the Dark Magician but if you do, then our DMG gets stronger, so you book the Dan Keto. Yep, yeah, okay. Okay, you know. Okay, good. Which I think means that the the Diabolic King B was coming down, unless you just wanted to get more in the graveyard anyway. So, in for the Multi-Strike Dragon Dragius. Okay, that does work. Going for the, uh, the Dan Keto, and then I imagine you go for the DMG. Yep, yeah, okay. You take the crash, it doesn't matter. We've won. Right? Just because, like, looking at the, the graveyard, right, there's... One, two, three, four, five, six aquas at the moment. If we put seven in there, then we crash with the uh, the phantom bind. So, but we're gonna have to, right? Or yeah, you know, we're gonna have to crash at least. Like a minimum, it's gonna be a crash. So do this. Add back to hand. We'll then go and put the curry bot in the in the graveyard as well. Or Dunkito. We summon. Oh no, wait. Cause to do anything else, we've got to. No, that's so rough. Right, but I mean, no, we, we've got we've got to force it out. That's the big thing. He's forcing it out. So, if we swing with Dainkito into this, we force out the trap card. One, two, three, four, five, six. At the moment is six. So this clears. We then just summon a cannon, and hope that's enough. Right? I think that's it. We just kind of do this. Right? So, make you bigger. That's fine. Go to combat. Attack in. Phantom bind does nothing. We still clear. You'll play it though, because you think it does, it still clears. 25, in for 14, okay. Right, that was too much thinking, 200 life points. There is no way, there is no way now that we lose this, right? If you summon a Dragius, we've got DMG to get bigger. We've got buffs in our hand. We've got one more Dying Keto in our deck, so we're fine. Nope, just swing it in. Okay, there we go. Five games done, we won. Four of the five? I, th I think it's four of the five, so not too bad. A bit of a longer video. So this is the list we are running. And it's pretty straightforward, right? It's kind of similar to Loom's one, right? But in place of the Tawners, you're playing the DM package instead. Also, we're playing Pierce because it does come up. It is very good. We're playing the Kreebot because, again, it does come up. It does make it so the Phantom Bind is a little bit less impactful on you when you're discarding for Dankito or Trooper Summoning. It does work out. Now, I do wish we didn't have this and we had like the Dynamus or we had another 1400 beta for Light Aquas would be way better, but we don't. This card is the MVP. Like, it is it is a strictly better crew bot in this deck. It's so good. Also, Terra Secure, it does come up, as you saw, as long as you see the play. Because a lot of times I forget this even has an effect, right? Sometimes I just think, oh, it's another Aqua Body, we'll play it. But no, it has an effect, and we would have won earlier. If we played it. Now on spells. So this party 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 is a very fun card if you can put it off, right? If your draw is turn one, it is very, very good. Later in the duel, it's not so much because you want to be applying some pressure. And depending on how you know far away in the duel you are, if you're facing a Dragius, it can help out. This card though is so good. If we get multiple copies, this deck could be insane. Just make it a body zero, a Dragius zero, attacking in. Of course, then can buff up the other guys to clear out the guys in the field. It is it is bonkers how good that is. But also, it's equally bonkers in a deck that does run Dragus by itself. You are seeing people play 
with the other skill. Right, this one is the buff 700 skill. You are seeing people play with the Killmaster Dunkito skill, which gives you a Dunkito the Killmaster. Very cool. And also the Boogie Master draw, which doesn't lock you into Dragius. And so you are seeing people play Dragius and the Prima Katana to buff up, to get uses off with a carrier, to play this, go in for a big OTK push. It's very funny when it happens, but also very annoying. And so I kind of want to put in this deck a Phantom Bind, but I'm not too sure on where you kind of slot it. You know, do you take out the Pierce? Are these two interchangeable? I kind of think they are. So that is my deck for Aquas for Dainkito. I'm sure there'll be more builds coming down the line and more potentially we cover on the channel. But looking forward to seeing this deck does go, you know? Give me that Dynamo Stark Witch, that'll be great. I'll see you all in the next Thorns video. See you then.